All right, here's a beautiful Inferno. This is a Hypo Honduran T positive blood. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today we're going into the Boa Room. And notice I said Boa Room because we'll be looking at Boas today. I haven't uh, gotten a good look at all my boas, so I'm going to be kind of going through the tubs and seeing what's going on. We're not going to really be looking at too many babies, more so adults. I want to just, you know, peruse my head through what's going on, see where some of these boas are at possibly in their, uh, I guess, predicted uh, delivery schedule. You know, some of them I kind of know when they're going to deliver, some I have no idea. And so, don't, you know, there's nothing wrong with not knowing when your boa is going to have its litter. I mean, I usually can predict based on its um, habits. So if it's laying on the hot spot, it's not eating. I know that, you know, we probably have a month or two to go at most. You know, if I start seeing her crawling around the cage, restless, you know, after being on the hot spot a while, then she probably has a week or two before she's going to deliver. Once you see that waxy stool, then you have another about a week or 10 days. So, but you know, nothing's in stone really. So if you miss the ovulation, you miss when she shed and you don't really have an exact date don't worry about it once again you'll see her actions you'll see how she's responding you'll see what she's doing and if she's just not interested in food which is not obviously a typical boa behavior if she's sitting on the hot spot a lot which is not typical boa behavior they, they do not sit on hot spots except when they're right after they eat then you, you could pretty much bet your bottom dollar something's inside of her now whether it's slugs or whether it's actually viable babies that that remains to be seen but she's going to deliver something more than likely so we have a couple of boas that are right on the hinge there so we're going to take a look at those and uh, maybe some other cool stuff that i happen to happens to just strike my fancy let's go into the snake room there's my uh back porch that has turned into the peacock breeding uh arena <laughs> look at this beauty this is definitely the breeding season for these guys, for sure. And my pool cage, because of the hurricane we had here, is still not repaired. So they have pretty much carte blanche to come in here and uh, do what they want. And they do what they want. They, they hang out here all day on my, on my porch. Sometimes they wade in the water. Most of the time, they're just hanging out over here. The, the males seem to like to hang out here more. Maybe they want to get out of the sun. And then the females will, will sometimes pop through here in the middle of the day, and uh, this guy's always here. He's like my, uh, my little familiar, you know. <laughs> but, you know, when they're not breeding, and breeding season, they don't open up their, you know, their tail feathers like that. They, they just kind of just, the tail feathers are always down. So this is definitely uh, the season that they're uh, breeding here in the spring. You won't see this any other part, time of the year. Otherwise, you know, they're, they're like I said, they just kind of run around like, like little dinosaurs. But when they're uh, when they're ready to go, which obviously this guy is, uh, they're they're peacocking, that's for sure. All right, there's my little boy. He's uh, I don't know if he's sleeping back there. I don't want to scare him too much. Seems like they sleep later in the day. They're up more in the morning. I haven't really had a chance to take these guys out since I got back from the hospital. I don't know if he wants to be bothered. He was kind of sleeping. I just want to say, hey, what's up, big boy? I know you may not want to come out. You might be taking a little nap, a little snooze. But I missed you. Yeah. We'll leave him alone. What a beauty. There's Annie Hall, my beautiful anaconda. Probably gotta feed her the next day or two. Look at that head, look how big her head has gotten. <laughs> her head has gotten really big. I gotta take, I, I feel so bad, I can't take anything, I can't lift anything heavy. They don't want me lifting anything heavy, so I can't take out my big snakes, but. I really love her. I do. I'm so happy I can have her. Like I said, I wouldn't want 10 anacondas, but I love the fact that I have her. 
and I've had her since she's a day old. She's doing great. Drop the phone. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll pull her out. Probably a couple weeks. But she's gotten big. She's put some good size on. She loves to hide under the paper. I don't know why, but she does. So we'll leave her alone. There she is, the one and only Annie Hall. There's my Gilbert T. Positive. It's also um, possible het leopard and het blood. Being bred to a, a triple het, Gilbert T. Positive, leopard, blood. So I had held this back just because we didn't even, uh, Chris Gilbert and I didn't even know initially when he bred these that there was, uh, there was a T. Positive line in there. He named it after himself, which is applicable. Called the Gilbert T. Positive line. These are really small bow, as you can tell. This girl is uh, probably going to have a litter soon. I still have the male in with her just for, for good measure. Who knows? But she hasn't been eating. She's been sitting on the hot spot. I produced this girl a number of years ago. So it's always cool to produce a female that then has a litter. I don't know. It's like kind of like... Uh, you really feel like you, you know, you are responsible <laughs> as opposed to buying a couple baby snakes, growing them up and then, and then breeding them together. It's kind of like you did it, but you never really produced those snakes to begin with. So this, this is kind of cool. So hopefully we'll, uh, it's a really nice, uh, T positive line of albino and I'm hoping to produce more of these. This is one of my most anticipated boa clutches or boa litters, I should say of the year. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm really kind of missed the ovulation if there was one that's why i'm keeping the male in because i just hedging my bets i saw a lot of locks earlier in the year this is my img female that's also rosswell ladder tail motley she's jet black she's also head call albino and head blood so that's het red dragon which is kind of cool and i'm breeding her to a red dragon so obviously um the red dragon is could also potentially have jungle in it we'll see but the thing that's exciting to me is to get that img gene with the red dragon combination of the blood and albino so we're looking for call albino blood img we can throw motley in there too i think that would even add more um, contrast to the combination and i think we, we would make some really really beautiful red dragons you have to come up with a new name for him too. But looking forward. This is this this boy is really, really spectacular anyway, but can we make it better? That's what we're trying to do. Alright, here's a paradigm female I produced a number of years ago. She's a paradigm, which is sharp albino, 100 percent and 100 percent bow woman caramel. They act like a super when they line up together on the same allele, and we get this what we call a paradigm. She's really, really creamy looking, and uh, it's it's lighter than a T positive albino, but it's not as it still has melanin in it, so it's not a T negative. And we're breeding her. I, I bred, I mean, when I produced her years ago, I think nineteen was it, or maybe before that, eighteen. And we're breeding her to this uh, little tiny male here. So I don't know if he's going to get the job done or not. This is a blood parahet. So. Obviously, if the bloods line up together, uh, we have a 50% chance of bringing bloods in there. Now, sh he is parahead, which means I'm not sure if he's 100% head sharp albino or if he's 100% head boa woman caramel. We won't know until we breed him. He's one of them. So she's a visual paradigm, so she could either throw sharp albino or, par or, or boa woman caramel when she breeds. So... There's a 50% chance, actually there's a 25% chance we produce, maybe even less than that, I'm not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna start doing statistics, but we have a, an equal chance of producing bow woman caramels and, and paradigms. There's no way we can produce a sharp albino because she, um, well, that's not true. If he proves out to be, if he's 100% head sharp albino, then we can produce some um, fire opals or albino bloods if she throws the 100% uh, the head sharp albino, you know, portion of her. If he proves out to be really bow woman caramel, then we can't produce any albino. So 
got a lot of potential with this. I don't, I don't know. I, I think she's rabid. But I think she's still eating now, too. That's the only thing. I don't know. He's a little small, so I don't know if he got the job done. I did see a, they were laying on each other and, and wrapped on each other all season, all winter. So we'll have to see. She's Like I said, she's a little on the younger side because she's a 19. So, But, you know, she has age on her. She's almost four years old, so she can certainly go. The question is, did the male get the job done? We'll have to find out. All right, here's a beautiful Inferno. This is a Hypo Honduran T positive blood. We call that the um, Inferno. Now, if it was a, if it was the Nicaraguan T positive line, they call that the Phoenix. But Honduran, according to my friend Freak Nut in the Netherlands, they call this the Inferno for good reason. It's way redder. <laughs> it's way redder than the Phoenix. She is gorgeous. Showed her to you many times before. Been breeding her all season with this uh, male. He is a hypo onyx. Het Honduran T positive, het blood, and het anery too. So the goal obviously would be to produce more of these infernos with the added, um, maybe a second copy of the hypo gene and an onyx, because onyx is going to make it even redder. So how would a super hypo onyx Honduran T positive blood look I don't know maybe we'll find out she's 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 one of my prettiest I think uh, breeder female boas she's tiny she's in a not even in a four foot cage here this is a, a small cage it's just a little bigger than a like a boa tub you know or a bull python tub I should say she just doesn't she's not that big they're the dwarf boas these Honduran localities as long as you stick with the Honduran T-Posit, the Honduran Hypo, they're going to stay small. Now, we do have blood in here, which is Panamanian, but bloods are pretty small, too. So this is a little bigger than what I would say a purebred Honduran bow would be. And I can, I'll show you one of my pure Hondurans. They, they're teeny. But this is still, I think, acceptable, and this is still considered dwarf. And you can see how small the male is. The male is really tiny. And... He's, he's a proven breeder for me many times over. So we'll leave them alone. We'll keep an eye on this. Hopefully we get a litter at some point. I can't wait if we do. All right, here's my uh, female I wanted to show you. This is, she had a baby, she had eight babies, or five babies last year, I should say. Big ones too. She's a T-positive, Sun Glow, Onyx, Motley, Het, uh, Het uh, Annery too. So she's, basically a Honduran T-positive, like we just saw. She's got the Motley gene in it and Onyx gene. So the Onyx and the Motley together create a striped animal, almost like a, a het leopard and Motley would do. And then we have that beautiful Honduran T-positive. She's got some nice, beautiful reds in her. She bred last year, I gave her off this year. And you can see she is teeny. I'm gonna put my hand on her so you can see how small she is. This snake bred, and I've, if you guys follow my videos, you know what I'm talking about. I showed you her when she was with babies. I mean, you would never believe in a million years that this this little boa can, was capable of producing. And she's not, she's a 15, so she's seven years old or eight years old. So she's not, she's not a baby and she's just, well, not, they don't, they don't grow. You can, I feed her a medium rat every two weeks and they will not get bigger than this. They're dwarf boas. This is a true locality dwarf boa. I have some babies from this, this litter still. If anyone's interested, maybe I'll even show you a couple of them. And uh, if you're looking for really tiny, tiny boas, this is the way to go. All right, here's one of the that uh, female's babies I just showed you. She's a, what do we call a red opal? So she's better than her mother. She's a super onyx motley Honduran T positive whereas the mother was only a single copy onyx. And when you get the, the double copy onyx in there, you get the fully uh, patternless baby or patternless snake. And obviously she's red because of the Honduran T positive. And that's, gonna, that's why we call it the red opal. Really nice, she's got black eyes. She's just, this is one of the nicest dwarf bows I produced. She's gonna stay super tiny, this girl. Uh, she's my whole back, of course, and because I've never produced anything like this, and you know she'll probably 
take five years <laughs> until she's five years old to breed, but I don't care. She takes up very little space. She's a small, she doesn't eat a lot, but it's all about age with these Onyx boas and these Honduran localities. Like I said, I really believe the future of, of a lot of the boas collecting is gonna be with the dwarf boas and the super dwarf boas like this little girl. And here's another female from that beautiful litter. She is, of course, Honduran T positive because both parents were. And she's also got one copy of Onyx in her, no motley, and so she's not striped, but beautiful nonetheless. You can see the Onyx gives you the, the really nice tail colors. Uh, the Honduran T positive is, probably, like I said, one of the nicest lines of T positive albino. And she's gonna be a spectacular breeder. You know, not everyone likes Motley in their uh, in their collection. So if you don't like Motley and you want a, a really small snake that's going to say teeny tiny super dwarf, this is great. This is a great little girl because she's got a copy of Onyx. Onyx is very desirable, obviously, um, genetically speaking. And then, of course, she is a visual Honduran T positive. So beautiful girl. All right, checking out the outdoor enclosure with my olive pythons. I see my albinos in there. I think she just shed. There's my male head albino. He looks like he's in shed. He's peeking his head out. You see right between the little branches right there? How cute is that? The sun's out. This is around four or five o'clock in the afternoon. This is when the sun hits these enclosures. So a lot of times they'll come out and grab a little sunlight. They'll get a little UV rays. Sun's pretty strong here in Florida, so. They won't, they won't bask that long. They might bask an hour or two. Um, I think he's hungry. We gotta feed him tomorrow. Pablo didn't feed these guys at all while I was in the hospital. And so I'm sure they're really hungry. So I don't know if, necessarily know if that was a good idea or a bad idea, but it is what it is. We'll, we'll feed them tomorrow. Cause I have a feeling they're, they're waiting. <laughs> Most people overfeed their olives anyway. So I just wanna make sure if the female is gravid that she has enough nutrition to you know bring those eggs to maturation so all right we'll let the male come out and do a little basking now and uh we'll wrap up today all right just check it out my uh my neighbor katie's horses these are her beautiful gypsy vanners they're getting big too whoa really big coming over to say hi if you ever want to see a bodybuilder horse look at those hoofs they're like Clydesdales, these things. They're really stout, strong horses. Absolutely beautiful in every way possible. They've grown a lot. They were babies when, when she first got them, and they're just really beautiful horses. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm so happy she has them because I really don't want the responsibility of taking care of horses, but I love the fact that I can come over and enjoy the horses whenever I want. Oop, there's some poops coming out there. And so I have the... Uh, the luxury of being able to enjoy her beautiful horses, yet not have to clean up a single poop or feed them. And here she comes. There goes Katie with her uh, Australian sh shepherds she's coming out with. What's up, Katie? <laughs> um, check it out, your animals. Oh, here they come. Australian shepherds. Love those guys. Yeah. You guys are the best. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you liked uh, checking out. It's really windy here all of a sudden. I don't know what's going on. We're having, we're having like a little tropical windstorm here. I hope you guys liked today's video. Hope you guys love the dwarf boas and the super dwarf boas as much as I do. I mean, they're, to me, they're just, they're perfect because they, they look and they act like boas in every way possible, except they're just smaller. And it's just, they don't take up so much room and you can have more of them. And so... You know, do I like big boas? Of course, but I, I like, I, I really love my dwarf and super dwarf boas as well. And if you're looking to get into that, hit me up. I have so much stuff still from 22. I haven't, I basically haven't list, listed a single boa from 22 on Morph Market. So if you guys are interested, let me know. I do have a lot of really good stuff that I held back and uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to sell yet, but I, I obviously have to sell something. So definitely hit me up if you're interested. I also want to send out, and I'm going to continue doing this over the next how many ever until he's healed, until he's cured, 
I'm sending out pr prayers and healing energy to Brian Barczyk over at BHB Reptiles. Uh, this guy is the bravest warrior I know. He's fighting a battle for his life right now with pancreatic cancer. Uh, I know he just got his um, first dose of chemotherapy the other day, and that's really tough, so I want to send out a lot of love to him. Here's a guy who's sick, and you know, and he's he's got some really major challenges ahead of him, and he thought enough to reach out to me while I was in the hospital going through my little heart thing, asking me how I was doing, and, and I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. He is a solid, solid guy. Uh, I don't know many guys that, that have a better, bigger heart than him and love their animals more than mine. So I send out all my prayers, all my love, and all my healing energy I possibly can. Brian, you're gonna do this, you're gonna beat it. I know you will, and I'm here for you, brother. All right, guys, on that note, let's uh, wrap this up today. If you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, turn on your notifications, and we'll see you back again tomorrow morning.